Hi guys, today we are going to learn what are Diophantine equations and then learn to solve a type of equation ax plus by is equal to c. To begin with, we should understand what Diophantine equations are. So algebraic equations or system of algebraic equations with integer coefficients and which are satisfied by integers are called Diophantine equations. Usually the number of equations is less than the number of variables. Diophantine equations can be linear or of higher degree and there can be any number of variables and any number of equations in a system. Let's look at some different types of Diophantine equations. The first type ax plus by is equal to c. This is a linear Diophantine equation in two variables x and y and three coefficients a, b, c. The second equation is a single equation, a linear Diophantine equation in three variables x, y and z and the coefficients here are a, b, c, d. The third example is an example of system of linear Diophantine equations in three variables. You can see there are two equations and there are three unknowns x, y and z. Rest of them a1, b1, c1, d1, a2, b2, c2, d2, they are all coefficients. The fourth equation is a Diophantine equation which is here the x and y variables have some power too. So they, this type of equation is called a quadratic Diophantine equation. The first equation as we saw was a linear Diophantine equation. It was a single equation in two unknowns. Second equation was a linear Diophantine equation in three unknown variables. That was also a single equation. The third example was linear system of Diophantine equations. There were three variables and two equations were there. Fourth equation was a quadratic Diophantine equation. Let's see how do we solve equation of the type ax plus by is equal to c. A linear Diophantine equation in two unknowns x and y. To begin with, we will first check whether such an equation ax plus by is equal to c has a solution or not. If it does not have a solution, there is no point in solving it. So how do we check whether such an equation has a solution or not? Here we numbered the equation as 1. We will find the GCD of the coefficients of x and y. Here they are a and b. We will find the GCD of a and b and see that the GCD divides the right hand side or not. If the GCD of a and b divides c, then the solution exists. And if it exists, then there are infinite solutions of such an equation. The integer pair xy which satisfies this equation is called the solution. When both x and y are integers, such a solution is called a lattice point. If x0, y0 is one of the solutions of this equation, then the general solution is given by x and y. We have x is x0 plus b by dt and y is equal to y0 minus a by dt, where d is nothing but the GCD of ab and t takes values 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2. This is what gives us the different values of t gives us infinite solutions x and y. You saw that the general equation we took was ax plus by is equal to c. What happens when our equation is ax minus by is equal to c? Then the general solution is given by x is equal to x0 plus b by dt and y is y0 plus a by d, t, where t takes the different values 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3, etc. So, what is the difference? Here, y value also has a plus sign. 
and x remains the same. The solutions of such equations, they all lie on a line and all solutions are equally spaced. The reason for this is because ax plus b plus or minus by is equal to c is nothing but an equation of a straight line. And this t value, t0 plus 1 plus 2 or t0 minus 1 minus 2 gives us those equal space. Let's try one example. What if we are asked to solve the diophantine equation 7x plus 18y is equal to 208 if the solution exists? First thing what we'll do is check the existence of the solution. So we will find the GCD of 7 and 18. We know that 7 is prime so the GCD of 7 and 18 is going to be 1 and 1 divides the right hand side to 0, 8. So the solution exists. To find the solution, we use Euclidean algorithm. What is the Euclidean algorithm? The algorithm states that we take the coefficients a and b, here they are 18 and 7, and divide the larger number by the smaller number and use our Euclid's division lemma to write it as 18 is equal to 7 into 2 plus 4. Here, 7 is our divisor. 2 is the quotient and 4 is the remainder. Now we will divide in the next step 7 by the remainder 4 and that will give us 7 is 4 into 1 plus 3. In the next step, the divisor, the dividend is 4 and the remainder 3 becomes our divisor. So 4 is equal to 3 into 1 plus 1. Next, in the next step, we divide 3 by 1 and we'll get 3 is 1 into 3 plus 0. What we do, we write our multiples on the right hand side just to maintain uniformity and the remainders are written here. Here we can see that 1 is the GCD of 18 and 7. We will now go backwards and use the theorem that for any linear diophantine equation ax plus by is equal to c, we can always find integers x and y such that ax plus by is equal to gcd of ab. Or we can, in other words, say that we are writing a and b as a linear combination of the gcd of ab. So from the second equation, we see that we'll just go back and see. We start from this. Here's this equation where you get the remainder as 0. We will leave. We move to the next equation and write 1 is nothing but 4 minus 3 into 1. In the next step, we will take, we'll replace our 3 by 7 minus 4 and in the last equation step we will replace 4 by 18 minus 7 into 2. So this is what we have done here. We started with 1 is 4 minus 3 into 1. Then we replaced 3 by 7 minus 4 into 1 and when we opened we got there are 4 2's so we wrote 4 into 2 minus 7 into 1. I just skipped 1 here. Then we replace 4 by 18 minus 7 into 2 and we'll get 18 into 2 minus 7 into 5 is equal to 1. If you simplify, you see 18 into 2 is 36 minus 7 into 5, which is 35. So 36 minus 35 gives us 1. We'll just rearrange the terms because our original question was 7x plus 18y is equal to 208. So we just took the minus inside and wrote 7 into minus 5 plus 18 into 2 is equal to 1. But we didn't have 1 on the right hand side. Our original equation had 208. So we will multiply the whole equation 
by 208 and we'll get 7 minus 5 into 208 plus 18 into 2 into 208 is equal to 208. On simplifying, this is what we get. You can see that minus 1040 is our x0 value, one initial solution, and y0 is 416. So how do we find the general solution? We will substitute x0 as minus 1040 in the formula. And we know that B is 18, so we have B. GCD was 1, so we divide by 1 into T. It is minus 1040 plus 18T. And Y becomes 416 because Y0 was 416 minus A. A was 7 upon GCD 1 into T, which is 416 minus 17. 7T. And by giving different values to t, 0, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, etc., we get infinite solutions for our equation 7x plus 18y is equal to 208. Let's say now we want to solve 13x minus 26y is equal to 39 if the solution of such an equation exists. We know that the GCD of 13 and 26 is 13 and 13 divides the right hand side. So the solution exists. We use Euclidean algorithm but we see that when we divide the bigger number 26 by 13, we get 26 is 13 into 2 plus 0. So there is no point in using the Euclidean algorithm because then here x0 value is 2, but y0 is 0. So we are only getting our x value. Let's write 13 into minus 1 minus 26 into minus 1. You can see that 26 minus 13 will give us 13, which is the GCD. So we have been able to rearrange the terms. You can do that. You can see that. Are there some values of x and y such that we can write 13 and 26 as a linear combination and equate it to the GCD? If we can do that, we will write it in that form. In our case, the right hand side was 39. So if I multiply by 3 all over, our solution will be 13 into minus 3 minus 26 into minus 3 is equal to 39. Just compare this equation to our original question. What we have inside are nothing but the initial values x0, y0, minus 3 and minus 3. And the general solution from the formula is x is minus 3 plus 26 upon the GCD into t, which is minus 3 plus 2t. y is minus 3 plus 13 upon the GCD into t, which is minus 3 plus t. So this is the general formula, where t value is 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2, etc. You can try by giving different values to t. Let's take 0, minus 1 and 1. The different solutions which we get are minus 3, minus 3, minus 5, minus 4, minus 1, minus 2. They all will satisfy the original equation. And we see that these are infinite solutions. Thank you for watching.